Hey fellow hobbyists, have you been thinking about getting into the whole 3D printing game? Does liquid resin scare the bejesus out of you? Do you feel that it's all too technical and complicated? Well, you know what? Then perhaps this video will be something for you. Hi folks, my name is Leif, and you are so very welcome to my YouTube channel called Devs and Dice, where I usually paint miniatures or craft terrain for the tabletop. I got in touch with the wonderful people over at Elegoo and asked them if they wanted to send me a 3D resin printer for review purposes. I honestly expected to be denied, but to my amazement, they responded quite promptly with a yes. Only a couple of weeks later, I had the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro, the Mercury Cure and Wash Station and 500 milliliters of resin at my doorstep. Shit. The reason for my reaction is simply because I felt a little bit overwhelmed and the whole notion about resin 3D printing scares me a little bit. I know that resin is toxic and I have a child in my household so it was very important to me that this was kept in a separate room. Hence why you can see that when I unbox this I am in a small room which can be closed and locked. Now the resin 3D printer came very well packaged and it felt like nothing could harm that package because there was foam and protective stuff all over the place so it was very very well packaged. Generally the first thing I do when trying to unbox things is to just get rid of all of the packaging, get rid of all of the plastic and sort of get all of the pieces out on the table. All of the parts were laid out on a table and the inevitable setup was looming on the horizon. So I pushed on with a mixed feeling of excitement and concern. I better not screw this one up. Now things of course got a little bit more complicated with the setup, but I have to say following the manual was actually quite easy except for one little small detail and i'll tell you what that detail was later on first i just remove all of the plastic from the vat the the actual lcd screen the interface buttons all of that remove all of the plastic And now just plug in the actual 3d printer make sure that everything seems to be working your interface should light up and you can start playing around with the actual build plate raising and lowering that and the interface itself is actually quite simple and understandable i almost didn't have to look at the manual in order to understand it to be honest here is the little mistake that is in the manual it says take an a4 paper it's not incorrect, but I recommend you to actually take an A5 paper, i.e. and a half of that. The reason for that is you need to be able to see how the build plate is oriented and you should look at the rest of the machine and see how it fits in. Now, the only thing that you need to do is basically set the Z equals zero axis on the build plate. Now, that sounds complicated, but essentially think of it like this. You need to put one piece of paper, normal print paper, and you need to barely be able to pull that out or, or put that in. That means that you have enough clearance for the VAT to go into the actual 3D printer. And that's pretty much it for setup. Once you've done that, you can reattach the VAT and actually put it into its place. And the only thing that's left is pretty much to put that rubber edge onto the lid itself. Now this will help to keep the smell out and keep a nice tight seal. So the 3D printer was all set up. Now I needed to figure out what the heck to print. And this won't come as a surprise to anyone who actually knows me. I of course would print out some test models, but this was also my first chance to print out models that had previously been out of my reach. 
Now included in the actual package of the 3D printer, you get a USB memory stick. Now plugging this into your computer, you can see that it contains a bunch of different things. First off, you have the Elegoo Rook test model, which is a good way to make sure that your 3D printer works properly. Second of all, they actually included eight new models, which were kind of nice, or minis I should say. And in addition, you have the manual and the latest version of Cheetu Box, which is entirely free, and this is a slicing software. Once I had installed that, I went down the prowl on the internet to find good 3D models that I wanted to print. And anyone who knows me knows that I love Conan the Barbarian. I found this uh, nice model called Bronan and this one called Sondra, obviously inspired by uh, <clears throat> some characters. I pulled these into Chitu box and sliced them, and this entire process was actually really, really simple. So I was getting excited. The prospect of having nice barbarian miniatures loomed in my future. Getting ready to do some actual 3D printing, I of course used the enclosed gloves and the mouth guard. You can see this is a respiratory sort of mask. This is very important when you're working with resin. Use nitrate gloves and use some sort of rebreather or mask. Now, I gave the resin a good shake and then I just poured so that the vat was about half full. I inserted the USB memory stick and then I just simply located the models and pressed play. This was almost too easy. From this point on, uh, the printing had started and there wasn't really that much I could do. In order to sort of get rid of that nervousness, I just, I, I think I sat down and played Rocket League and probably spoke to some friends over Discord. And just shy of three hours, the timer had run out and the prints were supposed to be done. So I came back to the room and I was really, really nervous. And I looked at the build plate and I saw shapes. It, it was sort of hard to see exactly what had happened but I, I at least saw something that looked somewhat successful. Now, Elegoo also sent me this awesome Mercury Wash and Cure station. So this I barely don't want to talk about because it's dirt simple to just unpack and it basically does two things. It cleans the prints and it cures them. Now one thing that I was so impressed by was that you could actually have this little contraption so you could put the entire build plate into the IPA alcohol. Once you put the lid on, it's free to choose one of the two programs and the one I'm going to do now is of course wash. You choose the time, and you just press play. It's amazing. It was super simple, and I was so happy. Now, once the washing stage was done, it was time to actually remove the prints from the build plate. And this is where I realized that one of my prints had failed, which I will talk about later. Now, I put them into the wash and cure station, I removed the jar of IPA and added the Lazy Susan and pressed on the other program, which was curing. So now I'm guessing that you're wondering what my impressions were with the entire process. Well, to cut it short, I am so bloody impressed with the entire procedure of the resin 3D printing from start to finish. Setting the Elegoo to Mars Pro up was a breeze. The actual slicing and printing of the 3D models was actually simple. The only thing I would say is that take precautions because you will be working with resin. Now, lucky enough, all of the things you need are included in the toolkit with the Elegoo Mars. The cleaning and curing step though, Honestly, using the Mercury Plus washing and curing machine, it was wonderful. It just happened automatically and it was easy. I mean, just the fact that I can take my entire build plate and lower that down into the IPA alcohol and have the build plate and the actual miniatures cleaned, it's amazing. I mean, it's simple, but it's sort of brilliant. 
But what about the end result, you may ask? What about the actual prints? Well, uh, <laughs> that was a confusing result, to say the least. I printed two Rook models, which were included in the USB, and then I printed one pre-supported Barbarian, and then I printed my Barbarians that I purchased myself that were unsupported. Any logic out there would have, of course, said that my Barbarians that I purchased would have been the ones that failed, right? Wrong. The pre-supported Barbarian failed, whereas my Barbarians actually succeeded. Now, I'm sure that the reason why the pre-supported Barbarian failed was entirely on me. But again, I just used the stock settings and, you know, went fearlessly into the void and just said, you know, you know what, let's print something. Now, in terms of the quality, first looking at the Rook, I mean, the quality is astonishing. You can see itty bitty small text and it's amazing detail. And one thing that I just want to point out is that usually when I see these videos, people don't really tell you how small these miniatures are. I half expected it to be like a good four or five inches tall, but in actuality, these are just shy of like one and a half inch tall miniatures. The Barbarians also came out looking bloody amazing, except one small warping that happened on the female Barbarian sword. Again, that was probably on me because it was my first time doing supports for anything. Now, these were printed out with the resin that I got, and that was a transparent green resin. I chose to actually prime the two barbarians and one rook, just to see how the surface actually looked like without having that refracted result. And honestly, if anything, it looked even more amazing. The Rook looked still good, but to me, the real difference was the Barbarians. They came out looking better than any 3D print I've ever seen before. And of course, I haven't seen all that many, so take that into consideration. And just to make it clear, I wanted to make a sort of apples to apples comparison. Here you can see the Barbarians, and you can see that they're flanking a miniature from WizKids. Now, the camera angle isn't different. The settings on the camera isn't different. It's the exact same shot. So you can see, size-wise, they're actually the same size. And, but in my opinion, the Barbarians look so much more amazing. I don't know about you, but for me, this is clear that printing your miniatures yourself is a really good alternative to buying pre-packaged minis. So all in all, I am really impressed with the printing results of the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. And the Mercury washing and curing machine was a blessing, to be honest. And honestly, even if you have another resin printer at home, I wholeheartedly recommend you to get the Mercury wash and cure station. It makes things so much easier. So with that, I want to thank Elegoo for sending me these two wonderful machines. I really see myself using them as, you know, in my terrain builds, using them to print small embellishments or even printing whole miniatures or busts to uh, paint on the channel. It's so exciting, really, because when you think about it, I feel like I've gotten a new tool which can just open so many different doors to me. For all you watching, I want to thank you so much for your time, but I want to leave you with one small request. I want to know if you have a 3D printer or not, and if you do have a 3D printer, what was your first experience like? Like, was it comparable to mine, or am I a fluke, or am I actually... <laughs> worse than others out there. Please tell me down in the comment section down below. So with that, I want to wish you all a great day, stay safe, and I will see you in the next video.